Wonderful. Good morning. Hello to everyone here on Zoom and those of you that are joining us on Facebook. Um, we're so delighted to have you here with us this morning for this service of morning prayer on the first Sunday in Lent. Um, I want to invite you, if you haven't already, you can go to our website and you can access our leaflet, although everything that um, you'll need for worship will be shown on the screen for you this morning. Um, we're so delighted to have you with us. Um, I think that that's probably all the information that we need, and um, I invite you to um, sit back and just ground yourself and in a moment of prayer as we listen to this um, beautiful set of preludes that Carol has prepared for us um, from C.S. Lang and James Beery. Um, so let, let us ground ourselves for worship.
Rend your hearts and not your rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repents of evil. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son. To the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. reading from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, 
This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never, get, never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for this morning is portions of Psalm 25. Let us say it responsively by whole verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have, have, I, have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our canticle appointed for this morning is Psalm 18, a song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb, that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Reading from the Gospel according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, 
O God, our rock and our redeemer. This is one of those Sundays when I feel like we know this, how the story is going to end before it even begins. If you've spent any time on the internet in the past two decades, however, you've probably run across the concept of spoilers and spoiler alerts. This idea of wanting to avoid knowing how the story is going to end before you've seen it. Spoilers are discussions of fictional stories that reveal some crucial element of the plot. Any element which you might not want to read about before you've seen the movie or read the book can be considered a spoiler. Some people go to great lengths to avoid spoilers. Others don't mind so much if they already know the basic story of a new piece of media. One of the first great opponents of the spoiler was actually the director, Alfred Hitchcock. I'm told that he did everything he could to prevent the plot of his 1960 film, Psycho, from being revealed to future viewers. He even went so far as to display a message to the audience at the beginning of the film, instructing them not to reveal the story to those who had not yet seen the movie. I think it's still pretty effective today because I haven't seen Psycho and people don't talk about it that much. In the era of the internet, spoilers became a big part of the online vernacular and the spoiler alert was officially termed as a what we call the courtesy warning for, okay, I'm gonna talk about the ending of Harry Potter here, or man, am I angry that this character in the newest Star Wars film is dying, spoiler alert, when some form of highly anticipated media comes out, the internet is flooded with articles that are only really appropriate for those who are in the know or those who are willing to be spoiled. I'm sure you've seen this phenomenon. This philosophy of storytelling, though, could not be more different than what we encounter in church. Our tradition's approach to the Bible, to the stories of God's movement in the world, and our invitation to participate in that divine life they start with the assumption that we already know how the story is going to end. Indeed, many early Christian thinkers believed that we could only read the whole of the Bible if we already had the end in mind. They sometimes called this way of interpreting the Bible a rule of faith. A rule of faith is a short summary of what we know God to be like and what we know God to be up to in the world. For the second century theologian and bishop Irenaeus, the rule of faith was a summary of God's loving action from creation all the way through to salvation and the church today. The rule of faith provided a framework for interpreting all the strange and sometimes disturbing things that we find in the Bible. And it helped the church to understand which texts are best understood from their plain reading and which could teach us more through allegorical reading. And, perhaps more importantly, the story of God in the world was always told with reference to God's deep love and redeeming work through Jesus Christ. If this sort of spoiler-ridden approach is true for how we read the Bible generally, I think it's even more true in the season of Lent. Lent has always been understood with reference to our destination on Easter morning. Spoilers aren't to be avoided here. Rather, they are the main point. We already know where we're going. There are no surprises here. Here on the first Sunday in Lent, we hear two stories in particular that help us to always keep the end of the story in mind. The end of the story of Noah and the flood is the first, and the second is Jesus' baptism, temptation, and first teaching. This is the whole Christian story framed in two little snippets. First, in the story of God's promise to Noah, we are reminded of how the story always ends with God's saving love. After 40 days of rain and 40 days of waiting for the waters to subside, Noah and his family are finally able to leave the ark. And as they do so, God's rainbow appears in the sky as a covenant about God's promise to all creation. In the gospel, we hear about the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, 
how the story starts. In Mark, Jesus is already a grown man when he bursts onto the scene. He is ready for baptism, and through baptism, he is rooted in God's affirmation of his belovedness. We are reminded that while the story and the journey may be long and arduous, God is with us through it all. And God provides in surprising ways for God's people. But this story as well, everything is not doves and rainbows at all times. We also have Jesus' temptation in the wilderness for 40 days. This temptation and wilderness time is an affirmation of our lived reality. It affirms that sometimes things are really hard, and sometimes they're hard for a long time. Forty, that biblical number for a long time, perhaps longer than we are ready for. The 40 days of Lent echo this time, the 40 days of Jesus in the wilderness, and the 40 days of rain, and the 40 days of waiting for Noah. Our fasting and self-denial in these 40 days of Lent are meant to echo Jesus' fasting and self-denial. They are meant to bring us closer to God, to the God of our salvation. We come alongside Jesus to be near him, not as punishment or correction. This is discipline in the sense of structure, rhythm, pattern. Patterns that allow us to make just a little bit more space for God in our day-to-day life. I saw an important reminder, which makes the rounds every year, that says that fasting does not bring every person closer to God. This reminder says that people recovering from eating disorders, especially, um, and others like that, can actually be pushed further into a sense of control and away from love. And so when we think about this idea of pattern, elbowing a bit of space out for God in our lives, I wonder what we consider for our practices for Lent in 2020, 2021, rather. I think many people who normally enter into Lent with vigor have been struggling about what to do this year. My clergy friends on Facebook are talking about how it feels like last year's Lent never ended. Shrove Tuesday and Mardi Gras were some of the last public events that filled our parish hall here at St. John's. Some people are saying that they are giving up Lent for Lent. Others are looking more towards habits and practices of being kinder to themselves. Few people seem to have the energy for the self-examination and repentance by prayer and fasting and self-denial that are described in our Ash Wednesday liturgies, those very traditional words. In a year when people have given up so much, how can I give up more, they wonder. But I think that this is to miss the purpose of our Lenten devotions, this end, this end of the story that we already know is coming. Gideon said something similar in his sermon for Ash Wednesday, that if we take on Lenten practices as punishment or hoping to achieve some sort of transformation, we are entering into the Lenten story without the end in mind. We've forgotten the rule of faith which guides us in our relationship with God, and we've forgotten that we already know the end of this story. Lent is not some sort of adventure or challenge or self-denial or self-improvement. Instead, it's a moment to remember the God who comes alongside Noah and the ark, the God who reminds Jesus of his belovedness, And it's an invitation to examine how our lives do or do not reflect that truth. Lent, at its best, is an excuse to finally do that which our heart has already always been calling us to do. To make space for the living God of love in our lives. And to share with that God who we really are and what our hearts are really calling us to do. The good news is that there is no suspense about how God will react. There are no spoilers here, because God loves you, and God wants what's best for you, and you will be welcomed with open arms. Amen.
in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, let us affirm our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, Our Father who art Lord, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through <clears throat> Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask your prayers for all those who are sick and all those commended to our prayers. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation, particularly those serving our nation overseas, our partner school and church St. Matthias in Daylon, Haiti, those who are adversely affected by the coronavirus and its response, and for those who are ill. Shirley Baker, Eileen Bellini, Chloe Clancy, Ali, Nick and Charles Culver, Elisa Dean, Luke Demarest, Nancy Fowler, Angelina Rose Frida, Barbara Gallagher, Bob Gonzale, Vanessa Gullo, Monica Gutting, George Harstead, Peter Health, Charles Hers, Evelyn Hiller, Edith Hoffman, Richard Shaw, Ruth Knutson, Marie Lee, Bettina Levy, Andrew Lynch, Virginia Martinez, Una McHugh, Linda Miranda, Alan Moore, Peter Morris, Alex Patterson, Peter Babelko, Joan Penrose Borum, Luna Bell Peron, Robert Rimels, Jack Santaniello, Catherine Simon, Joan Small, 
Helen Colgate-Smith, Carol Walker, and any others we name now aloud or in our hearts. And I invite you to unmute yourself and speak into the room. In their loneliness be their consolation, in their anxiety be their hope, in their darkness be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask your prayers for those who have died, remembering especially Remy Taylor Perron, in whom, for whom the altar flowers are given to the glory of God and those we name now aloud or in our hearts. I once again invite you to unmute yourself. May the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen. I ask your prayers and of thanksgiving for all the blessings of our lives as we name them now aloud or in our hearts. I invite you to join me. We give you thanks most, most gracious, gracious God, God for the beauty, for the beauty of, of earth and sky and, and sea, and for, for the, the richness, richness of, of mountains, mountains plains, plains and, and rivers. And rivers. For the, for the songs of birds, of birds and, the and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you, we praise for, you for these good gifts and pray, and pray that we, that may, we may safeguard them for our posterity. Our posterity. Grant, that, Grant we that we may continue to grow in our, in our grateful enjoyment of your, of your abundant creation, creation to the honor and glory of your name, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we have just a few announcements this morning. It's so nice to see you all here today. Um, I wanted to draw your attention to two announcements in the At St. John's this week. The first um, is that um, vestry nominations are open. They're open for a short window because I think um, the, the, the committee will need time to um, uh, select them. Um, we elect our vestry here at St. John's um, at our annual meeting on the second Sunday after Easter, I believe. Um, Seamus is nodding. Um, so we're um, receiving nominations. I think the deadline is technically today. Um, so the um, uh, email address to send your, if you know anyone who you think would make um, an excellent member of the governance team here, um, please send your um, suggestions to the uh, nominating committee. Um, the second thing that I wanted to draw your attention to is the ongoing um, clothing and soft warm things drive for high high um, this has been a particularly hard year for the gentlemen who are normally stay as part of high high um, the weather has been cold and the normal systems for volunteering and supporting folks that are without homes um, have been tremendously strained by the coronavirus um, precautions um, so if you have extra um, men's clothing um, and also blankets and things like that. Please bring them to the church. The details are in the at St. John's. Um, I don't believe that we have a deadline, but I think that these things are um, needed now. Um, so the sooner you can bring them, the better. Um, uh, you will also see in the at St. John's information on our Lenten offerings. Um, we have after our worship today, the um, poetry of Mary Oliver, poetry in Lent. Um, so if you'd like to stay on, we'll probably do a bit of coffee hour and then start that around 11. 
Um, and if you are still wanting a workbook for that, you're welcome to, to have that. Um, to, so there's a form in the at St. John's. The other offering is our Wednesday evening um, book study. We'll be reading um, Learning to Pray by um, Father James Martin, the Jesuit priest. He's funny, but also very prayerful. Um, and so I commend that unto you. Um, those are both great opportunities. Our um, Sacred Ground Anti-Racism Journey um, is fully subscribed at this point, um, so we hope we'll be able to offer that again in the future. Um, two other um, things that came to us, one from our partnership with the North Shore Land Alliance. Um, there will be a talk on Thursday evening about how to um, avoid tick bites um, and the help to prevent the spread of tick-borne diseases. This was something that we had scheduled for last March um, and they've done um, great work to rescheduling it. The um, information on how to RSVP for that um, is in that at St. John's as well. And then finally, Gideon asked me to share with you the news about um, CVS having um, vaccines available. Um, I don't know if this is, I am not following the details of vaccine stuff here and now, but he had sent me a thing and asked me to, to share it with you all. I don't know if that's just that they're now not as busy as normal or they didn't have them before and now they have them now. Laura has information. Yeah, I think I, I really forwarded to you that for Gideon. It's only for 65 and older. Yes. I believe that that's the that's the that's the current New York State guidance, right? Yeah, it's one one can be, but they the, um, there's there's a link um, or a phone, just go on their website and you should be able to figure it out. Yeah, um, so I I know I know many of you have already found your vaccine, um, but if that's something you're still um, in in need of, the information for those who are um, in the currently allowed to be vaccinated under the New York State guidance um, can sign up there, particularly older folks. But it's only CBD. Okay, I, th I, I, thought that, I thought the comorbid people could do it as well. Wow. Really, interesting, okay. Right. Okay. Um, all right, um, I think that that is it for announcements. June, you didn't have anything at eight. Do you have anything now? Yes, I wanted to take this time to thank Chloe and Carol for their continuous service of musical offering. Thank you. Thank you. Beautifully done, both of you. All right. Well, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.